Good morning. I hope you're enjoying this day and uh, looking forward to uh, worshiping, thinking about God, hearing from His Word for a few minutes. And we're going to get into that uh, in just a moment. Let's pray together as we begin. Loving God, we bow in your presence, especially at this time when our world is in such turmoil. We pray that you will give us peace. Um, we know you are a God of justice, and there's something in us that cries out for justice. And we're so imperfect at bringing it. Please bring it and help us to be instruments of peace. Thank you for Jesus, our Savior. Thank you that we have this day to remember him and to praise your name. And help us to be faithful in living out our calling this week. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So we want to read this morning from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, which is really a long chapter in the New Testament um, on the resurrection. It has a lot to say about the resurrection. But I want to look at just a little slice of it today. And I'm going to read the paragraph that, that runs from verse 42 through verse 49. Now, in that uh, paragraph, just preceding that paragraph, Paul has been talking about the sun and moon and stars and how they're all different. And uh, some of them are more impressive than others and so forth. And the way he says it, in particular, is that some are more glorious than others. Then he says uh, the following, beginning in verse 42. So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable. What is raised is imperishable. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. Thus it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. But it is not the spiritual that is first, but the natural and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, a man of dust. The second man is from heaven. As was the man of dust, so also are those who are of the dust. And as is the man of heaven, so also are those who are of heaven. Just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the man of heaven. So I want to talk this morning about the man of heaven. In my hand... I hold something that has never been touched by a human being. Now, you may be thinking, how is that possible? You're, you're a human being, and you're holding it in your hand. Well, rest assured, what I'm saying is 100% true. What I'm holding in my hand has never been touched. But we'll come back to that in just a little bit. First, let's turn our attention to what Paul says here in 1 Corinthians 15, in this paragraph we've read. Paul, in this text, is trying to encourage us and to build us up and to give us a hope, unlike any that you can get anywhere else. And I hope what we talk about for the next few minutes will put a spiritual hope and a charge into you that will make a difference. It's really some of the most exciting material that you could ever read. Why is that? Well, it's because the, the inspired apostle here tells us that things are not always going to be like they are right now. He tells us that something new is coming. And he proclaims that because of Jesus, something major is going to change. Right now, all of us have what Paul calls here natural bodies. But one day, all of us are going to have spiritual bodies. Now, of course, Paul is writing to Christians, um, people in Christ, baptized believers, 
who are committed disciples of Jesus. And he says we are going to get a spiritual body. Now Paul draws a great contrast between the natural body that we have now and the spiritual body that we will have one day. He says that the natural body is perishable. That is, it has an expiration date. It is going to die. In fact, as we all know so well, it is already dying. It is getting older right now. It is obeying the natural laws of the universe and tending toward disorder. Things that were once in shape are now out of shape. Some of us are missing some things our bodies once had, uh, be it teeth or hair or hearing or sight. Now, you ever get in the, the cupboards in the morning and grab the bag of bread for your toast and uh, you see before you get your slice that there's a big green spot of mold on that top piece. Well, what do you do? Do you throw it all away? Or, like me, do you sort of sort down through there and hope that there's some in there that's not that bad? Well, the same thing that happens to bread happens to our bodies. Both things are natural. We begin to age and to wear down and to break down. We are perishable. We all have an expiration date. But Paul says a day is coming when we will get a spiritual body that is imperishable. It will not die. It will not break down. It won't pull a hammy. It won't tire. And it certainly will not pass away. And then Paul says that this natural body we have is sown in dishonor. Really, it's just another way of saying the same thing. Our bodies are not perfect here in this world. You can look at us and pick out our problems. Some of us perhaps easier than others. But then he says the spiritual body that is coming to us one day is a glorious body. It will be perfect. It will be without flaw. No critic will be able to denigrate it. It will be glorious. And then he says that the natural body is weak. Who could argue that point? You take the strongest, most fit person in the world, and if you run him through a brick wall enough times, the weakness will show. But the spiritual body that's coming to those who follow Christ, Paul says it is powerful, unconquerable. Paul is comparing for us here the bodies we have now with the one that we will have after the resurrection. So when, when he says spiritual body, think resurrection body. It will be imperishable. It will be glorious. It will be powerful. The problem for us, I guess, is that we've never seen one of these resurrection bodies. All we know is the natural. Uh, the only glimpse of a resurrection body that we have is really the description of Jesus after his resurrection. So think about that with me for a moment. I think of two different verses in this connection. Uh, 1 John chapter 3, verse 2 says this, Behold, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. And then, and even more clearly, in Philippians chapter 3, Verses 20 and 21, it says this, But our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, 
who will transform our lowly body to be like his glorious body by the power that enables him even to subject all things to himself. Now, you hear it there, don't you? One day, Jesus is going to give us a body like his. He is going to transform his followers into something new, something better, something glorious. Well, do you remember anything about what Jesus' resurrection body was like? Of course, we don't know everything about it, and even some of the things we know we don't fully understand. But after the cross and the resurrection, Jesus appeared to his followers over a period of time. We, we know that the body he had was a real body. You know, he wasn't a ghost. He had flesh and bones. In fact, he emphasized this to his disciples. Uh, Luke chapter 24, verse 39, he said, Touch me. Look at my hands and feet. For a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. So it was a real body. But it was definitely different. Uh, Jesus was not always recognized. And he seemed to have the ability to conceal his identity from people if he wished to do so. And he could appear and disappear at will. Uh, you remember we mentioned earlier uh, the strongest man in the world, even if uh, e even the strongest man in the world couldn't endure long if you smashed him into a stone wall over and over again. But Jesus, after he was raised, could walk right through a stone wall and and walk right through locked doors and suddenly appear in the midst of his disciples. That happens, John chapter 20, verse 26. And then he would say to Thomas, go ahead, touch me. It's really me. So Jesus had a body. He was recognizable as Jesus when he wanted to be. But it was a different kind of body. It could do things natural bodies could not. Again, he could disguise himself. Uh, if you want to see an example of that, look at what it says in Mark chapter 16, verse 12. He could also, in this body, ascend from the earth. Acts chapter 1, verse 9. He could appear and disappear, as we said. Now, I don't know if every single one of those things will be included in the new body that we get at the resurrection, if it will even be needed uh, in this body that we've been promised. There's a lot we just do not know. But what we do know is this. He is going to transform our lowly body to be like his glorious body. And we will get one that will not die, that is glorious, and that is powerful. You see, all our lives, we have been a lot more like Adam than we have been like Jesus. Adam was a natural man, just like us. He had a natural body that failed and that eventually died. But on Resurrection Day, we will become like the man of heaven, Jesus. Just as surely as we are human beings and we are here right now, so we will become like Jesus one day with a spiritual body. Or, as Paul says it at the end of our passage, in verse 49, he says, Just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, that's Adam, uh, remember, he was created from the dust of the earth, according to Genesis 2, verse 7. Just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we shall, future, also bear the image of the man of heaven. That's Jesus. Now, if that doesn't get you interested and, and fired up about your future, 
I'm afraid I'm, I'm out of ammunition to do so. And, you know, if that's not true, Paul says in this same chapter, if there's no resurrection, then all that we're doing this morning is playing games and, and wasting our time. That's how central all this is to our faith. But it is true. As surely as you're here and I'm here this morning on the Lord's Day in the flesh, as surely as that's true, then uh, so is the truth of the resurrection body to come. I, I can't really describe it any further. I just know that it is without doubt. 100%. Just like I know without doubt 100% that the thing that I hold in my hand today has never been touched by a human being. Maybe you forgot about that or thought I'd forgotten about it. And you still may be asking, how is it possible that uh, I as a human being could be holding something in my hand that no human being has ever touched. Well, let me reveal the mystery to you. All I, a human being, am touching with my hand right now is a peanut shell. Inside of that shell, inside my hand, is a peanut that no human being has ever touched. You know, all you can see and all I can see is the shell, but we know what's inside, don't we? And when you look at me this morning, and when I look at you, all we see really is a shell, a natural body. But that is not all there is. Because Jesus was raised, there's something else to come. And it will be revealed one day. Paul said later in this chapter, verses 51 and 52, he said, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. Rejoice in that hope and that truth today. May God bless your Lord's day as you focus on him.